Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the portfolios feature in Asana. It was a little while ago now that I first made a video talking about portfolios and there have been some updates. So in this video, I'm going to explain what even is a portfolio and I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can use it to really zoom out and see the big picture in terms of where you're at with different projects in your account. And hopefully this video will be really useful for anyone that's sort of on the fence, not sure whether they should upgrade to the next subscription of Asana. This video will help you understand how portfolios might fit into your business. Now, if you do have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like to learn more about portfolios and take your training to the next level, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. Now, I just want to mention at the top of this video that Portfolios does require at least an advanced subscription of Asana or higher. Uh, and you will see projects and portfolio views. This is part of that advanced plan. So if you are just on the free or the starter version of Asana, you will need to upgrade in order to get access to Portfolios. With that out of the way, what even is a portfolio? Well, quite simply, and you will find por Portfolios on the left here in the sidebar, a portfolio is a collection of projects and inside the portfolio for the projects that I've added, I can easily see the status of the projects. I can see if the projects are on track. I can see the percentage completion of the project or the milestones that are complete. And I can see other key information and custom field data related to these projects. So it's sort of like a high level view where I can sort of zoom out and, and take a look at all the projects that we have on the go right now. Now in my master Asana online course, which I've linked in the description, I do go into more detail about how to structure your Asana account, the teams, the projects, and the portfolios. But essentially you can choose whatever projects you'd like to go into a portfolio. For example, here I have this portfolio called all clients. Now I have projects in my demo account here. Um, lots of these are just internal projects for things like admin and accounting or launching a new project, uh, new product. But I've created a portfolio that just shows me these five client projects that we're working on. So you can see I've added those to the portfolio here. So this portfolio represents all the clients that we're working on right now, and I can see the status of those projects. And if I go to a different portfolio, like internal projects, this is a different collection of projects, and this portfolio is where I can see the internal projects that we're working on. So Something to think about is how you want to structure those portfolios and essentially you're grouping together similar types of projects into one portfolio. You can also put projects in multiple portfolios. For example, I could put all of my client projects in here as well. And I can do that simply by clicking the add work button and I can add in other projects that I'm working on to build out my portfolio. But what we generally see is clients we work with will have a couple of different portfolios to group together similar types of projects. Now, let me explain some of these fields and columns in a bit more detail. So the first thing you can see in your portfolio is the status of the project. So if I click on any of these, I can see the current status. I can see what the project owner has written. So this is showing as off track and I can look at why we're off track. I can see their status update or I can update this status if we're no longer off track. Maybe we are now back on track. I can post a brand new update. So Apple Vision Pro launch was a success. And I can write a bit of a summary here about how the project's going, what we need to do next. And uh, I could talk about my budget here or add in any custom sections to build out this sort of qualitative report explaining how my project is going. Now, once I update that status, if I go back to my portfolio, you can see this is now back on track. So the value you get from a portfolio is somewhat dependent on these statuses being updated fairly regularly. Usually this is the responsibility of a project manager, somebody who's gonna update the status generally once a week or every couple of weeks. Moving over, we have this column where I can see time that has been tracked in these projects. And this is because if I again go to one of my projects here and go to my customize menu, you can see I've got some custom fields for estimating uh, time and tracking the actual time spent on tasks in this project. And I'm going to link up here a video that I created a little while ago explaining how you can do time tracking in Asana. 
I can also see the progress of the project. So here at the moment, I'm showing which milestones have been completed, or I can change my progress type and I can see the percentage completion of tasks. So this is just simply a count of how many tasks are complete and how many are remaining that still need to be worked on. I can also see the dates of the project. And again, I can click in here to adjust the start date and end date of the project itself. Or if I go to one of my projects, I can also adjust those dates from the overview tab here. These dates, this is gonna determine what shows in my portfolio. And that just helps me understand, you know, what's our estimate in terms of when this project is gonna finish. That's gonna help me understand when can we start a new project? When are we gonna have capacity to take on another client? And then moving along, you can see I have a bunch of additional fields, things like client name, product, cost, uh, engagement, uh, search monthly fee, that type of thing. These are actually custom fields that I've created. So under my customize menu, I can add additional fields to track other information that I might find useful. For, for instance, the client's name, their email, what's their budget, engagement type. And this is really where I can start to customize different portfolios for different use cases. So here in my all clients portfolio, it's important for me to see things like the client's budget, the client's name, uh, tracking my team's time, that type of thing. Whereas in one of some of my other portfolios, like my internal projects, I might have uh, different custom fields um, for tracking, you know, the internal person who's accountable or other important metrics and data related to these internal projects. So I can have different custom fields for each of the portfolios that I create. So as you can see, this list view gives me a nice high level view uh, that shows me key information about the projects in my portfolio. Now, if I go to the timeline tab along the top here, I find this view is really useful for just visualizing when the different projects in the portfolio start and finish. That's what we can see here by these pink lines. So if I click and drag and I adjust these lines, that's actually going to change this date field here. So I can very quickly update the start and end date of my projects by dragging this, these bars. I can also visually see here the milestones in my projects. So if I go to Apple over here, I've got a lot of tasks in here, but you will notice some milestones like this one with the little diamond shape. I can convert tasks to milestones by right clicking and marking them as milestones. And so the portfolio isn't gonna show me all of these individual tasks. That's really where you would go to the actual timeline for that specific project. But in the portfolio, I can see the timeline uh, of all the milestones across all the projects in the portfolio itself. So one of the key determining factors of, you know, when I create a task, should it be a milestone? Well, if you want that task or milestone to appear on the portfolio timeline, it needs to be an actual milestone. And again, I find this really, this visual view really useful for seeing when different projects start and finish, how far through are we, what milestones do we have coming up, and this also helps me to forecast when are we going to be able to take on my, uh, the next client or start the next project. And another tab that I find really useful is this workload tab. Now this is where we can start to use Asana for resource management and capacity planning. So again, I do go into more detail in this in my online course, but to give you an overview, essentially what I can do on this page is see for the different people working in, in my projects, how much work do they have assigned? Now I can define that through setting up capacity uh, up here. So I'm using the estimated time of a task to forecast and show people's capacity. So when I have that estimated time added in here, if I open one of these uh, assignees, I can click on a task. I can then adjust my estimated time for a task. Maybe that's gonna be 42 hours. And that estimated time, those 42 hours, are gonna be evenly divided across this date range, excluding weekends. So that's why you can see here uh, 1.3 hours of work scheduled a day here, because this, this 42 hours is being divided across these working days. And so when you have estimated hours applied to all the different tasks that people are working on, you get to see this graph of how much time people have scheduled in a day. And what you're gonna notice is points in time where somebody might be over capacity. 
So we can see this red section here where they are actually, um, their daily capacity is three hours. Maybe this person is a contractor on my team and they have um, too much work scheduled for one day. So I can click into here, I can see, okay, it's this task here. Maybe I need to push this back or maybe I need to allocate more time to the task and uh, allocate that work across more days to, to spread out the work. And again, this is another very visual way of seeing how much capacity does the team have? When are we going to be able to start a new project, start that new client project based on the resources I have at my disposal right now? This might even help me decide, do I need to grow my team? Do I need to hire more people so that we can take on more projects at once? So there is your introduction to portfolios. We really have just scratched the surface here. And if you would like to learn more about how to structure portfolios, how to create those custom fields and better manage the capacity of your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. I hope you found this video useful. If you do have any questions, leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.